What's up, YouTube? This is Apocalypse Now. All right, so, you know, if this was 10 or 15 years ago, this game would have been the rave of the week. Uh, just because of the performance of Jalen Brunson, but because, you know, uh, this is merely the 16th game uh, this season, the player has gone off for 50 or more points. As opposed to 90s when you could expect it maybe mm, two or three 50-point performances in the season. Um, you know, it, it just came flew on the radar, especially considering that Spurs aren't going anywhere, and the Knicks are not perceived to be one of the premier teams in the NBA. But Jalen Brunson had a premier performance last, uh, not last night, the night before last, um, when he scored a career-high 61 points, which is just one shot of the franchise record held by Carmelo Anthony of 62. Jalen Brunson, without the assistance of Julius Randle yet again, Needed 47 shots to get those 61 points, converting on 25 of 47 from the floor, still well over 50%. He connected on 5 of 13 from downtown, which is up in my head around 38%, and converted on all six of his free throw attempts. He also had six assists and one steal. Only one other player in the game had 20 or more points. That was Dante DiVincenzo, the former Milwaukee Buck, the former Golden State Warrior who had 20 points in 47 minutes of play. And the only other player to have double figures was Josh Hart, with just 12 points in, I think, 42 minutes of play. So definitely, man, you know, it's nice sometimes to see these type of individual performances, but realistically, the Knicks uh, need to give, his teammates need to give, jo uh, excuse me, need to give, Jalen Brunson, more help, all right? This is just not going to get it done. Uh, if the Knicks want to go on a little bit of a run and perhaps push up in the seedings, I don't know if they're going to be able to do that. Uh, but, you know what I'm saying, it is what it is. Because right now, if the playoffs ended today, they would face the Orlando Magic. And while casual fans would be like, oh, well, it's Orlando, they're not. Well, it's a 4-5 matchup. And usually, the most competitive first-round matchup is the 4-5 matchup. And when you look at the fact that although Orlando is not a strong offensive team, Orlando is, I believe, third, or let me see, matter of fact, I just, I just looked at it. I believe Orlando, Orlando is third in points yielded per game at 108.3. And they're second in defensive rating. As we saw last night when they put the clamps on the Memphis Grizzlies, 118-88. At one point in that game, they were up by 43. So they are a defensive team. They don't score a lot of points. But then again, that could be nullified going up against a Knicks team that, well, look, man, we've seen Julius Randle the last couple playoffs. You know what I'm saying? He's been a perennial choke job artist in the postseason. And, you know, it could be stretches where the Knicks are not scoring. And, you know, that could be the ideal team that the Orlando Magic could beat in a playoff series. So, you know, it is what it is with this team, you know, the New York Knicks. I just, I don't know, for some reason, you know, the Knicks are probably going to finish with an identical record. The Knicks just don't feel like the same threat that they were last year, you know. Uh, but, hey. It is good that the Knicks are at least good enough now to make back-to-back postseason uh, appearances. Uh, I don't think they won the playoffs in 2022. Maybe they were. But at least they're getting to the playoffs. And that's a market improvement over much of the 2010s when a lot of times, man, they were fielding some horrible teams. But once again, shout-out to Jalen Brunson, man. You know what I'm saying? 